It's a mailbag Monday. We've got questions about Giants outfielders and Cubs outfielders and a ton of NL Central pitching questions. Let's talk. You are Locked On MLB Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked on MLB Prospects, your home for all things minor league baseball. I'm your host, Lindsey Crosby, baseball writer for Sports Illustrated. Thank you for making this your first listen every single day. And it's a Mailbag Monday, as we do every week, where we take your questions about prospects, about teams, about minor league baseball, and all of that. And the first question's here. And reminder, if you have a question for the show, I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. The show's on Twitter at Locked On Farm. And you can email us, LockedOnMLBProspects at gmail.com. Again, mailbags every Monday. would love to take your questions. Uh, tell me what you want to hear about. Uh, so this first question comes from Retail Breaks on Twitter. Uh, it, he um, he runs a tr- trading card thing. So if you if you're interested in trading cards and some some of the trading cards about these guys, go check him out on Twitter. But the question he had, he actually asked about two guys. The first one was about Giants outfielder Hunter Bishop. So uh, refresher on him: first round guy in 2019 out of Arizona State, and you know he got picked up after his junior year. He hit 22 home runs. Kind of went on the map and um, something where his pro debut in 2019, he test, uh, he he got injured. Then he tested positive for COVID in 2020, which messed him up for the alternate training site and all that kind of stuff. And then in 2021, he only got 16 games because of a shoulder injury. Uh, and only five of those were outside of the Arizona Complex League. So uh, for, for him, the biggest thing is I just need to see professional at-bats. I mean, the, the projection we have for Hunter Bishop is a, is a second division regular. Uh, you know, and, and defensively, he can play center field, but I feel like he would be better um, at a corner spot. His arm, there's, you know, there's questions. Is it average? Is it below average? So maybe something like a left field. He could play center, but I think he's going to be better in a corner. Um, offensively, this is where we need to see more of Hunter Bishop, and really where he needs more at-bats. So there's a lot of swing and miss in his game. And I want to say, small sample size, uh, but you know, 14 games in the Arizona Fall League after recovering from that shoulder injury, struck out about 39% of his plate appearances. So obviously too much. And part of that is to be expected from a younger hitter who has just seen professional ball for the first time. You have to remember, I mean, he got he his 2019 debut in the, the rookie ball was cut short. He missed out on 2020, only had 16 games in 2021. So you look at the numbers, it's 45 at-bats in the minors for a 2019 draftee. Uh, Obviously, you need a full season out of him. And when you look offensively at his game, again, a lot of swing and miss. Uh, Having plus raw power isn't really helpful if you can't make contact with the ball. Uh, But I'm confident he's going to be able to do that. So he's one of those guys that tinkers with his swing a lot. And, and so he's going to figure out, he's going to find the contactability in all of that t- tinkering. The question is, can he get his contact up to the point where the power can start to show in games? Um, and it's just simply a matter of he swings and misses way too much. I think a lot of that is adjustment period to professional baseball. We just don't know because we've seen so little out of him. So he's a guy, I'd look for him to go to high A this year. Um, start off there. You want to move him to Double A so that he can get a taste of 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 that advanced level of pitching because you need to see him get at bats against quality pitchers, and he needs the at bats to figure out what he's trying to do on offense. Like I said, he tinkers a lot. He works with his swing a lot, his stance, his mechanics, his handset, that kind of stuff. He's going to figure out something that works. You just need to get him in front of those pitchers to do it. Uh, another question. From retail breaks. The other guy he asked about um, was Cole Roderer. So, center fielder for the Cubs. He was a high school guy, uh, 2018, a second round supplemental pick. And a couple things Cole has to do kind of fits a similar profile to Hunter Bishop, right? Like, uh, he needs to be healthy and he needs to work on his contacts. So, he's a little bit different as from Hunter as far as 
He's got a good frame, good speed, and a good arm. And so, I mean, Cole can absolutely stick in center field. Uh, the question, you know, I mean, he would be average to above average at center field. I'm not projecting him out to be like a gold glove guy, but you're not going to you're not going to be frustrated with his defense in center field. He's going to make the routine plays. He's going to ha- he's going to have a chance to make the difficult ones. You're going to be fine with it. But offensive work is where like we need to see more here. Um so he's he's really pull happy. And and um the issue with that is he's also selling out for power. And what I think he needs to do instead is he needs to settle for quality contact. So you kind of look at some of his numbers 229, 345, 300 in 21. That uh, was 20 games, about 70 at-bats. Again, small sample size. Uh, you saw five doubles, no home runs, four stolen bases, one caught stealing. I think he's got a good speed. Um, he has enough power where if he can focus on quality contact versus just trying to hit a ball out of the ballpark, it's going to do him a world of good. And part of that is a young guy. Obviously, young you know, young player gets to professional baseball, wants to impress. But the thing specifically, like and like what I like about his profile, like he can hit an elevated fastball, which is hard for a lot of MLB players to do. He can hit the elevated fastball. The issue is he can't identify the changeups, and so it's really easy to kind of get out and fr- you know get him out in front of a changeup because he's sitting fastball, uh, and he can do it too. He needs to be able to adjust to the off-speed stuff and the braking stuff. So not not being so aggressive, focusing on quality contact versus bombs and working on pitch recognition, working on specifically working on um, identifying change-ups, things like that. Go go hang out with Jordan Wicks and have Jordan Wicks throw you fastballs and change-up all day. It's a, uh, Jordan Wicks has the best change-up in the Cubs system. Put these guys together. Let them work together. Let them sit there and, and I mean, they're going to be at the, same, at the same level this year. And just have him throw you a steady diet of fastballs and change-ups and work to figure out the difference. Work to read and see what's different about these things so you can learn to identify those in-game. And like I said, just focus on making quality contact with those versus trying to do uh, a home run derby every at-bat. And in just a minute... um. John sent us, sent us some questions about um, some Pirates pitchers. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. I mean, after months of college basketball, like the top, the final four is set. They have figured out the top teams, and we will get a national champion this week. So, betonline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and your sports info from all the latest. Odds, contests, player props, you name it, they have it. And it's the best spot for all your sports developments, including reviews of leagues this season. So uh, if you're a college basketball fan, great. Go check it out. Go put in your bets for who you think is going to be the national champion. Are we going to see Coach K win uh, win one in his final year? Is he going to be North Carolina? Like, If you have ideas on this, go put your money on it at betonline.net. If you're not a big college basketball fan, that's fine. BetOnline.net is your continued source for all your sports wagered information needs. Professional basketball is in. Like I said last week, the MLB lines are up. Uh, hockey is going on right now. Vegas casino games you can do at BetOnline. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action because BetOnline is where the game starts. Okay, so John Martin via email sent us uh, some questions about two Pirates pitchers. And this is a two-part thing here. The first one is he just wants more info about Ramsey Contreras and Quinn Priester. And then the second one is which projects out to be the better pitcher. And I love this kind of format here. Tell me about these two guys and then which one of these guys projects out to be better. So, all right. Contreras, 2016 International Free Agent of the Yankees. He was sent over in the Jamison Talion trade of 2020. And if if you want more in-depth with Ethan from Locked on Pirate, uh, from Locked On Pirates, I want to say the second week of January, I think the Friday show, it's like literally my first week running the show, uh, Ethan and I did a crossover and we talked a lot of these pitchers. So that episode's out there in the podcast feed, you can go find it, but yeah, Ruanza Contreras, 2016 IFA of the Yankees, um, moved to Pirates in the Jameson Italian deal. And I see him as like a mid-rotation starter, 
but you've got a little bit of durability questions physically. So six foot 197, he's not a huge guy, right? Uh, and the thing is, like he's worked really hard to add strength to, to his frame. And so, I mean, he's he's throwing gas at you. So fastball is like 98 miles an hour. I mean, high velo, it's got deception to it. It comes out of his hand at a really interesting angle. Makes it hard, kind of hard to pick up. Um, the slider, he has a plus slider. He's a little bit, it, it's a newer pitch to him. He picked it up when he, when he was with the Yankees. It's a little bit inconsistent. Needs to work on on spotting that more. But for being new to the pitch, I mean, it's a plus pitch. It is good. He's got a, he's got a change up. It's above average. He doesn't necessarily use it a lot. And I think he could stand to add it more. It does play really well off of the fastball. So um, above average, needs to use it more. And then um, then he has a, cur- a, a curveball that it like flashes as a plus pitch, right? So it's got high spin and like good depth to it. And the big thing the Pirates did is they worked to disguise all that stuff better. And I think part of the reason he hasn't used the changeup as much as he should is because it didn't used to disguise very well, and you could see it and hit it. But the Pirates have really worked with him on sinking the release point as far as as having everything blend arm action, release point, everything off of the fastball. So your changeup has more deception now. Um, Your slider plays off of that. Uh, The curveball has better spin right now. And so you you can... You add all that together, and it's it's really exciting. He's got a good, consistent arm action. They've helped him develop. Again, the thing I worry about is is the durability. He he throws very hard, um, and it's something where when he pushes, uh, he can get extra velo out of it. But it, I mean, it physically wears him down. Um, I want to say it was he had a forearm strain last year, missed about two months, and. Came back in time to debut at the end of the season, but still, it's something where, given the frame, you just have to wonder about, can he hold up to the rigors of a uh, full professional season? So, um, for him, what I want to see, and he's trying to earn a a spring training spot now. I think he just got sent to AAA, uh, but doesn't mean he's not going to make the open day roster. It could just mean they're trying to get him in minor league camp to keep him on a specific schedule to start, um, you know, the fourth or fifth game of the season. But uh, definitely a guy I want to see a little more control when it comes to to those pitches when he's pressing and then just showing that he can do it for a full season. Um, Quinn Priester. So little info here. Quinn Priester, 2019 first rounder out of high school. So younger, earlier off than where Contreras is. And he's a a mid-rotation starter but doesn't really have... Uh, significant swing and miss stuff. And he also has some dirty ability questions. A little bit bigger, 6'3", 210, but still something where um, you need to see a little, little bit more from him. His fastball can... he t- Back in instructional league, he touched 98 with it. Right now, it it, it, it sat about 94 last year, and it, w- it was tailing off at the end of the season. So uh, he's got like two separate fastballs. He has a four-seamer, and he has a sinker. Uh, and what's great about the sinker is he can use it really effectively. So he, in the minors, he had about like a 55% ground ball rate. And his ground ball to fly, fly ball ratio was like 2.2, one of the best in Pittsburgh's entire system. So he can use the sinker well. Um, Curveball is a plus curve. Um, slider is kind of average. And the changeup is fringy to average. He doesn't have a lot of faith in it. And again, I think that comes back to to like for him it disguises well everything disguises well off of his arm action and so uh, he just needs to to have more confidence in some of his stuff Uh, I think part of it is he doesn't have a ton of swing and miss he's like 24 percent strikeout rate a lot of his stuff is he's going to give up contact but it's going to be ground balls to his defense are going to they're going to take care of it so part of that's mindset get a little more aggressiveness in him um He's got above average control of the zone. So yeah, get him a little more aggressive. And durability, same thing. Get him on the proper regimen. Uh, I think he's going to be a, like a mid-rotation guy. As far as which one projects to be a, pit, a better pitcher, they both are kind of, as far as high, uh, for, for like the risk, 
And I'm not saying that because they're not going to work out. I'm saying that because every prospect has risk baked in. And so it's like medium high and extremely high. Um, You know, I see them as moderate, you know, high risk there. Uh, But to me, Contreras, Contreras has better velocity. He has better top end pitches. And uh, Priester has a better pitch mix. He has five pitches, two distinct fastballs. Um, the you know the, the plus curve, the slider, the changeup. He has better overall arsenal, but Contreras' stuff is more top end. And when I'm trying to figure out which pitcher is better, I'm thinking about which pet which pitcher, if everything goes right, looks like they can be the better pitcher going forward. And to me, um, it's a guy who has like elite level tools who can harness those. And, and turn them into weapons. And I feel like Contreras has um, a, the better fastball of the two. And and the capacity there to, you know, he, the, the slider is plus as well. The curveball flashes plus. And so if everything goes right, he has three plus pitches. Whereas Priest, you're, you're looking at a plus curve, an average slider, a plus fastball, you've got, okay, you've got two plus pitches. Three, you know, three greater than two. So I think, for me, it's Contreras. But it, if it was Priester, it wouldn't surprise me at all in the end. Um, if I had to pick one now, I'm picking Priester. I've seen him do it more. Uh, but again, um, if... It's tough. I mean, something like this is tough. And there's a lot of different ways to define best. Um, and speaking of that, in just a minute, I do have a question about the best pitching prospects in this division in the National League Central. Uh, but first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. Um, if you're just like me, spring break is over, so you're thinking about summer vacation. You're thinking about all that kind of stuff. I'm trying to lose a couple pounds, uh, get in a little better shape. So one of the things I did was swapped out all of my candy bars with Built Bars. All Built Bars are covered in 1% real chocolate, uh, 17 grams of protein. Very little, you know, it's like 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs. Like, good for you. Tastes good. So um, my my office, my pantry, my car, all the places where I have food, I have built Bars. And the idea there is I'm eating something that's better for me. <coughs> so go to built.com, Check out all the flavors there. Mint brownie, coconut almond, uh, cookies and cream. The shamrock one they had for St. Patrick's Day. While you're there, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 at built.com. Okay, so the final question, this is also from John V. email. This was in that same email. Uh, he asked, like, if you exclude the Cincinnati Reds, go go watch Locked on Reds. Jeff, is, Jeff and Steven do great work over there. We've talked to them a couple times now. If you exclude the Cincinnati Reds, who is the best pitching prospect in the division? Okay, so let's recap. Pirates, I think it's Ronzi Contreras. Uh, we talked in our fantasy baseball ga- uh, show last week about Aaron Ashby for the Brewers. Uh, so Aaron Ashby for the Brewers, um, he is a guy, he's got the stuff to be a number two or number three, but he's got to get fastball command. Um, I mean, he he was in AAA, he, gets t- he got tons, tons of strikeouts, 64 innings, 100 strikeouts, but 32 walks. So, um, I mean, it is. it can touch 99. It sits mid-90s. It is a weapon. Good sink, good run to it, but well below average command. Can't spot it very well. Uh, the slider is a plus pitch. It flashes plus plus. It is an absolute, like, weapon. Um, the changeup is average now. Uh, it's a little better against a righty because of its movement. Um, and then there's a curveball that's just kind of like a, it's there. It's a get me over. He doesn't necessarily trust it. Um, but Aaron Ashby is one of my one of the, the pitchers I like a lot in this division. Um, he's not the number one to me, but I like him a lot. Uh, the Cardinals, their best guy, Matthew Lib- Matthew Libertor, uh, left-handed pitcher, high school in 2018, and he's a guy. I think he's probably going to be a. a a number three or so. He's going to debut this year. Um, they pushed him to AAA last year, despite he had never pitched above low A. 
Um, struggled to begin the season, but as he finished, his final 10 starts, 2.67 two, ERA. Um, you know, fastball velocity varies. Sometimes it's low 90s, sometimes it's mid to high 90s. Uh, he's, got a, he's got an above average curveball. He's got an above average slider. He's got an above average change, like lots of weapons there. Nothing is above average, though. Like, nothing stands out. So he has a good arsenal. That's why I think he's going to be a number three. He's got enough weapons that are good that he can keep you off balance. He can get outs. But nothing is, like, best pitcher in the division level skills for me. Um, For me, I think, and it's more of an extreme pick, but for me, I think it's Braylon Marquez, the lefty for the Cubs. So 2015 IFA out of the Dominican. And... um. Made his major league debut on the final day of the 2020 season. And then had COVID-19 last year before spring training. Had a shoulder strain. Ended up missing the entire season. So this is a little more of an extreme pick because we have no idea on the health of his shoulder. Before the shoulder injury, though, back when he was at, you know, he was one of the hardest throwing pitchers in the minors. So his fastball, uh, 96 to 98. Uh, could hit 102, and it did not look like he was trying hard to hit 102. It reminds me, not a comp, but the fastball reminds me of the bruised dog Gratterall with the Dodgers. It doesn't even look like he's trying, and he just, it's a casual 100. Braylon Marquez is a casual 100. He's got a a curveball, sits low 80s, a lot of velocity difference off of it. He can throw it early early in the count for strikes. Um, you know, he's got a, a good slider. So, I mean, the, the fastball is plus plus, the slider's plus, the changeup is above average, the curveball is good, but he's working on it. Uh, and to me, it's just that fastball is so elite uh, that, like, I can't, like I want to pick him, even though I have no idea how good his shoulder is. Um, if his shoulder does not uh, come back, Right, obviously he's not gonna be the guy. If he comes back looking the same, but his control does not get any better, then he's probably gonna end up being a closer because he's he's got like I said, he's got velo, he's got the plus slider, he's got the above average changeup, he has enough to be a great reliever, a great closer. But I think if everything works out, best case scenario for all of these pitchers, he's the best of the four. He's probably a number two or so just based on how elite that fastball is. Uh, but he also has the most variability out of all of these projections. If I had to take, if I had to rank him as to how much I liked him, I would probably do Marquez, Ashby, Contreras, Libertor. And I feel like Ashby might be too high, but it's just to me, I like the elite tools. Um, Marquez has it. And, and I think he's, as of right now, not knowing the health of his shoulder, assuming he's the pre-injury um, Braylon Marquez, he is number one. So if you're watching on YouTube, uh, thank you. It really does mean a lot. Um, if you would do us a favor, like and subscribe. It does help the show a ton. Uh, if you, this is in your podcast feed, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and, uh, and subscribe to the show. We are the only daily minor league podcast. Coincidentally, we're the number one daily minor league podcast, uh, Monday through Friday, available for free wherever you get your podcasts. Again, if you have questions for the show, I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. The show's on Twitter at Locked On Farm, or you can email us, LockedOnMovieProspects at gmail.com. Tomorrow, we are talking college baseball. It's a college baseball Tuesday. There was some wild stuff over the weekend. Tennessee took it to Ole Miss. Texas Tech had one dude who is now the emperor of Texas. Uh, both a walk-off steal of home and a walk-off grand slam. Uh, I don't think you can do any better than that as a hitter. Uh, but until then, this has been Locked on MLB Prospect. Uh-huh.